The Cintiq 24 HD Touch is now the flagship unit for Wacom in terms of our Cintiq range. So the Cintiq range consists of the 12, the 22, the 24 pen only and the 24 touch. When we actually launched the Cintiq 24 HD, it was the first time we actually brought in Adobe RGB. So Adobe RGB at a level of 92%. When we look at the touch, we've actually upped that to 97%. So also, when it comes down to actually working with the display port, we're talking 1.07 billion colors. It's actually working at 10-bit. So it's a lot we can actually do with that. We've always had a, a very good brush engine with the pen. So the brush engine hasn't really changed. So the pressure sensitivity is still going to be the highest level. The pressure sensitivity is also going to be the highest level as well. When it becomes quite interesting is when we start looking at touch. We're actually looking at multi-touch now. So with multi-touch, we can actually use 10 fingers actually on the screen itself. You now kind of effectively have two separate pens or inputs for the screen. You might find you're using the pen for editing on the timeline. You might use the finger to select things in your project window uh, if you're working in Premiere, for instance. Likewise, in Photoshop, rather than using the keyboard to select which tool you're using, you could use your left hand to use a touch on the tool panel, and you can use your right hand with your pen to do all the drawing. So here you can actually see me moving around quite easily my on-screen keyboard. When it comes down to me actually working with my images here, you can see I can actually use my pinch. I can go into my menus, just using one hand actually on here as well. I think with things like Photoshop, you want to kind of use the keyboard for quick shortcuts. I mean, the five finger touch to bring up the keyboard after a few tries, it did start to come natural and it is quite easy, but initially it's, oh, do I use my hand for that or do I use my pen? But I think you kind of pick up a routine and a rhythm so you know what you want to touch when. It's worth remembering that the applications that you're using probably didn't have touch in mind when they were made. For example, in Photoshop, I found that with the two finger gestures, uh, it's difficult to go from a rotate to a pan um, in one motion. You have to kind of take your fingers off and then go put them back on. And similarly, your finger is acting with the precision of a mouse cursor. So initially, you might think you're, you're actually touching something where you're not, and it takes a bit of practice. In terms of actually working with the touch itself, I can actually touch on and touch off. Again, you know, for me to go touch on, go to my information, go to my touch preferences, it goes straight into this area for me to actually work on. So again, I can actually change how I want to work in terms of my taps, three finger menu, or my four finger menu. The use of touch has grown so much over the recent years. New operating systems are gonna be incorporating touch a lot more, so it's a lot more intuitive in that way. Windows 8, for example, uses touch from the get-go, and Apple's also moving in a similar direction with OS X. With this in mind, I think the Cintiq Touch will really find its place in the near future when touch technology embeds itself fully within our operating systems and the applications within them.